My name is Wendy Watson. I'm the president of Orbit, and uh, I thank you all for investing um, in real time and in broker distribution channel today. So thank you very much for coming. Um, our theme this year is make it real, and that came about when we were we had an industry strategy session. Was it January? Happened? January, and. Um, what came out of that is that we need to do a reboot of real time in Canada. I'm sure Brian's going to tell us where the U.S. is on that, but in Canada we need to do a real time reboot. So make it real is we want you to think about today as you go from session to session to session. What am I hearing that I can make real in my business? What ideas, what technologies, when I'm networking with people, how can I make it real in my business? Because sometimes we just do some thinking about it and we don't actually make it real. So that's the challenge, the gauntlet, make it real today. Uh, first of all, I want to thank IBM, our corporate sponsor. And we have two people from IBM today, Halia and Christine. Halia, hand up. Where's Christine sitting? Over there. And Christine is moderating the panel, so you get to know her a little bit later. And then for our event, we have two gold sponsors, PolicyWorks and IBM. And silver sponsors, Deloitte. Um, I always call them TBW, but Custom Software Solutions, HCSSI, Efficient Broker, which is uh, Bath and I actually, ClearPay, Xanax, and Intap. So thank you to all of our sponsors. So we're taking a break at 10.15, we have a 45 minute lunch at 12, we have a coffee break at 2.15, and we start drinking at 4.15. How does that sound? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So uh, we're going to have a cocktail reception just up there at 4.15, and that's a thank you to everybody. So hopefully you can stay around and extend your networking just a little bit longer. Um, this year, as we have in the past two years, we have an exhibitor area, and we have six exhibitors this year. Did I hear a clap? So we have Applied Systems, Keel, Efficient Broker, PolicyWorks, uh, ClearPay, and CSSI. So, uh, we heard from our exhibitors last year that we didn't visit them enough. So this year we're incenting you to visit them. So you've got, I'm silly Brian, oh he's doing a really good job. You've got a little thing called a passport when you've checked in from either Janet or Tara at the front desk. So if you go and visit each exhibitor, you get them to stamp your passport, then you put it in that plastic box that's sitting right up there on that silver table. Your name gets entered, and we are drawing for an Apple Watch at the end of the day. Now, who does not want an Apple Watch? Yeah. Yes, if certain tattoos stop a, a, a Google Watch, or an Apple Watch, I knew I was going to do that, an Apple Watch for working. So, yeah, so just be careful with that. So I'm going to keep reminding you throughout the day to please go and visit the exhibitors. They invested time in today. So, you know, show them that you care. Learn what they have to talk about and share with you. If you didn't notice, we have Matt over here doing videoing of this session. Uh, so if you don't want your picture, uh, you, you might have to peek under the table for a little bit. And we are going to release the videos uh, session by session uh, over the next, first queue? Over the next how long queue? Next, next, yeah, next week or a couple of weeks. And we don't have handouts, you notice, but the presentations will also be on the website, so you can download them from there as well. So no paper, we got challenged a couple of years ago on that. Uh, if you need to get up and walk around, get up and walk around the side or the back. You're not nailed to your chair. That, that is not what happens here. Uh, if you need to get a coffee, go get a coffee. So, agenda packed. Packed, packed. Devona's going to keep every session in this room on time. She's telling us when it's 10 minutes left, 5 minutes left, 2 minutes left, and she's cutting us off. She's going to turn the microphone off, and we're all done on time. So, she's, she's uh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, she's tough. She's a tough cop. <laughs> so, um, on the table are feedback sheets. So you can, as we end each session, complete your feedback sheet, or I'm gonna ask you at the end of the day to please complete it if you haven't yet done so. Because that's how we make these events better for you, is by knowing what you like and what you don't like. So, quick orientation on Orbit. Here's where we are. And this is Devona as of now, or as of our November year, or December year end? Now. now. So, 11 carriers, nine vendors, four friends of Orbit, a little over 5.1 billion in premium dollars. 
uh, represented for brokers and just over 6,000 individual brokers. Our mission is, as always, facilitate collaboration and education between all stakeholders, brokers, carriers, vendors, middleware vendors, those associated with our industry, for the advancement of real-time, once and done, transactions to drive efficiencies using uh, industry standards. Core values? Is this anybody's first experience with Orbit? Yeah? Just two there? One here. Where? Who's here? Okay. Um, so our core values, um, it is of common purpose. Everybody aiming for the same thing. So we are about workflows, not technology. Uh, we start, or we do not put one vendor or one carrier, anybody ahead of another. Everything is single entry multi-company interface when we develop our best practice workflows and uh, it all follow industry standards and everything starts and comes back to your BMS. Those are our core values. And five goals that have remained unchanged since we came about in 2008. Education, all stakeholders, helping implement and drive real-time workflows, facilitating open communication amongst all stakeholders, uh, a unified voice for brokers, which carriers think is really important, and I kind of get that IT dollars are finite. You want to know where you're going to get the biggest, biggest bang for your buck. And promote and uh, enhance and participate in CSIO standards. This is, as far as I'm concerned, our manager. <coughs> Never doubt that a small group of committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever happens. Makes me smile too, Rob. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I think about as Orbit members, a small group of committed citizens who are trying to change our industry and drive our industry forward. So I thank you for playing a part in that. And the new folks, if you want to know how Orbit came about, I'd be happy to have a conversation with you. I think the rest of the people are, um, they probably are tired of my story by now. But it started in 2008, I'll tell you that, and then there's more later. So in November, at the Insurance Institute, we had our AGM, our annual general meeting. And uh, we had great turnout uh, by brokers and uh, vendors. Very, very slight turnout by carriers. Um, so we made extra effort for this event in getting carriers to come here. Um, and these were the topics. What, um, there was a lot of frustration in the room. Uh, about people, and I, and I share that frustration. We, as far as real time is concerned, and Brian, I don't know what's happening in the US, but we are stuck in neutral as far as real time uh, is and stands. We don't seem to be moving forward. We've published best practice workflows, they've gone through the entire vetting process, and they sit on the shelf. We call them on the launch pad. So they're not moving anywhere. So the group discussed um, um, at our AGM, what, what was causing us to be stuck in root trouble? And these are some of the points that came out. From there, we then talked about, well, what are some things we can do differently? First thing was, we have not enough hands baked in the pies. So we have finite resources. We need to reduce the number of working groups so that we can actually uh, spend more effort moving things forward. So we agreed on four working groups. They've changed since then, but we agreed on four working groups. Um, the second um, thing is that we have actually had a jump forward on two fronts for one of our former working groups that's sitting on the launch pad. Is Kim Opine in the room? Kim? He must still be in the, the dry run upstairs. So I, I understand now that Applied is offering real-time payments in Canada. Who, who else? Yeah. Yes? Who's, who's responding to that? Yeah. Yes? No, Jeff, you're naughty, this is true? No, I'm not. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so I don't know. Brokers, TAM brokers, do you know this to be true? Because the U.S. has had it for many, many years. Yeah, so that's awesome. Where's John Nautic City? John, can you stand up? So, so John Nautic is from ClearPay, and um, he has an announcement to share with us about real-time payments moving forward. So I'm going to share my microphone with you. We're going to have to stand side by each. Okay. Thanks, Wendy. Uh, yeah, so just in 30 seconds or less, so uh, our company is ClearPay, and basically what we facilitate is the transfer of premiums and data directly from the majority of EMSs in the marketplace uh, with no IT integration on the carrier side. 
So this has been a real big build and lift, a lot of R&D done over the last two years. And uh, where we are today, uh, we've been around to many carriers, uh, the majority of carriers really like it. What they want to hear from back from us is, well, how many brokers want this? And so that we've been focused on that for the last several months. And so far, the brokers have put up their hand with us saying, yeah, we really like how you've designed this, how this fits into our existing workflows. Those brokers that have said, yeah, we want to try this, uh, they represent over $6 billion in premiums. So we've definitely got the ear of the marketplace that are ready and willing to uh, have a better way to transmit data and money, more secure, existing workflows. Uh, it's really about the, the whole industry uh, driving towards efficiencies in this whole payment data remission process. So what we continue to need, the carriers really need to hear from brokers directly. We can tell them who's interested and who's not, and uh, but they, if they they don't hear from the brokers directly. This will fall to the bottom of the list again and never get off the ground. Um, the carriers again have said, look, we really like it. Uh, great, you've got a really good momentum. We still want to hear from our broker directly that they want this. And it's really easy and cheap for carriers to implement. No IT involved. I can't say that enough. So that really eliminates any, any barriers on their side. It's a very, very simple process for carriers to adopt. So what carriers do you talk to? Because just say carriers yep. are No, great question. So the, your, your local rep is going to be your best, uh, best person to, to raise your hand with and say, look, this is what I'm really interested in. For those that have uh, uh, ex relationships with some uh, exec levels, uh, obviously those are, are the decision makers and the carriers. And, for them to hear directly. You know, we're really focused on, on the people that we're gonna make their lives different on the carrier side and better. And that's the people in accounting and finance. And this really makes their jobs uh, easier from a reconciliation standpoint. Um, but the more areas that you get into the carrier, the, the better for us. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, John used to work at Vivo. He was on our uh, real-time payments working group. And um, obviously he's passionate enough about this. He's now with the Pay, he's making it happen, so yay. <laughs> Yeah, woohoo! Woo uh, and, and the other thing that we were able to share at our um, annual general meeting is that we have an enhanced and a collaborative and a cooperative uh, relationship with IBAO, which we did not have for um, a few years. So that is extremely positive moving forward. And we are now of one mind um, as far as broker technology and efficiencies moving forward. So that's really, really positive. So, um, our, at our AGM, and I'm sorry to use the acronym, Annual General Meeting, our members asked us for an industry strategy session, which we hosted in January. So we sent invites out to all the usual suspects. We had a carrier representation, national um, and uh, local, um, from those who are much more nimble to those who have more bureaucracy to deal with. We had small brokers to large brokers. We had um, vendors there, and we had people like Insurance Canada. We had Deloitte there. Bill Morris connecting dots for us on the consumer, what the consumer wants. So it was a really good session. Uh, these are the, the numbers who participated at the event. So uh, I was actually really nervous driving to that event and because it's like, like this is such a big topic, it's such a big question. Like, who knows where it's going to go? Are we going to, we're asking people to give up the day of their work life. Are we going to get enough for them out of the day to have invested the time? So these are the goals that we went to the day. Are we went with to the day? Any English majors in the room? I'm not quite sure which is the proper way to say that. And then we asked those who were present uh, what their goals were. And we had lots of uh, flip charts from that day because there was a lot of information that came out. So those were our goals. <clears throat> then when Bill did his level set uh, and brought the consumer into it, his good news was brokers are making progress on engaging their customers, but not quickly enough. We need to speed up the engagement and the loyalty uh, with our customers and the contact with our customers. Then Patrick Weiss from Insurance Canada uh, did a presentation on insurance 2025 or 2014 or 2024, 2024, so it was nine years out. Some nine or 10 years, you know, he made it up anyway, what does it matter what the number is? <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, Patrick's message to us was that the importance of the distribution channel, the broker distribution channel, that is, is uh, high moving into the future. It gives us a greater opportunity for differentiated service than we had before. <clears throat> Anybody here listen to CBC Radio? Spark on Sundays? 
with yeah, Noriyang. So she had just two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, she had a, an e-commerce uh, specialist, expert specialist on. And this woman was talking about how when Amazon came into being, and in the last few years, they thought that they were going to take over the world and all the retail stores were going to close. <clears throat> wow, well, that is what happened. People still want to be able to go in and touch, try on. They maybe need something immediately, not wait for it to be delivered. In fact, we're not talking about your 24-hour, you know, um, delivery of your new computer or anything. But and, and and her prediction was that in the long run, only 10 to 15 percent of the sales will be through e-commerce. There is still a huge need for bricks and mortar. Interesting, eh? Kind of not where we thought the, the world was going. Then we had a registration from Cumis, and I said to Beth, now their direct writer, email them back, say this is broker distribution channel only. The guy emails me back, and he says, oh, but we do distribute through brokers. So I pick up the phone and say, what? What do you mean you distribute through brokers? I know who you are, you're Cumis, I worked with cooperators for 15 years. And he said, no, we, have, we distribute through credit unions. And our staff in credit unions say that their customers do not want to deal with call centers. So we've had to expand our reach into broker offices because consumers want face-to-face -face service. They want a relationship with somebody local. So as far as I'm concerned, that's all really good news. And it supports what Patrick was saying in 2024. So I thought he was making it up. I think he might have been actually telling the truth. So maybe he knows. Yeah, oh, be careful, is that what you said? Yeah, be careful. So I thought that was pretty positive. So the next thing we got to, we're still in the industry strategy session, were all the challenges. And trust me, there were many more pages of challenges than, than what we've got here. So the, these were the highlights and the ones that when we had the discussion that, that jumped to the top. And from all of this, we were trying to uh, find out, well, then if these are all the challenges, what is it that our broker, uh, brokers need and want? What is it that our carriers need and want? And most importantly, what is it that the consumer, our customer, needs and wants? Then we started to look for a thread. And the thread was that if we are going to be able to offer our customers uh, efficient, quick service at their fingertips when they want it, access to their information 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we cannot do it without real time. We need access to the information that is in our carrier systems that is current. So out of that came our one project we're calling it, which is the real-time reboot. So at that session, uh, volunteers came forward. We roughed out a plan for moving forward. And we figured out, though, that all of the information we had was kind of anecdotal. We don't really know all of the transactions that all the carriers offer, and we don't really know how many brokers have actually implemented it. So our first step was to do a survey. <clears throat> and that was going to give us the current state. So um, Brett Bodeway from IBAO mailed it out to, I think, uh, nine, eight or nine carriers, and I mailed it out to 10 or 11. So we had a mailing to 19 or 20 carriers. I have only 10 minutes left. Lord, are you sure? <laughs> I'm going to take Brian's time. It's not a problem. Yeah, thanks, Brian. That was very sure. Oh, okay. So, so the current state, we really want to know two things: what do you offer, and what is the use. And I am really not going to hit every slide here because Brian wants to talk. So, so EDOCs, first lines, we asked, and you know what? We will make this survey available. Um, uh, Tracy Bowen will be here later from IBA. We haven't had time to dig into the meat juice of it. We just closed it on Friday. So I just took some high level stuff. So on personal lines, what do you offer carriers? And then who's using it? How many of the brokers are actually using what is turned on? Interesting. We have not a bad number of 75% or more using. We have this big gap in the middle. So not all brokers are using eDocs. <clears throat> And we should have had another option on here, which I'll, I'll, I'll think about it later. And then what real-time transactions do you offer? Still a significant number not offering real-time transactions. Now, some put comments in that they are starting the process. And I would think that's probably some of the smaller carriers or the mutuals that are coming on board. And then um, 
I split out uh, policy and value inquiry from claims and said, okay, so what percentage of brokers are using it? I'm astounded. This is such a low number. So then we went to commercial lines. And I split commercial lines into IRCA, individually rated commercial auto, and non IRCA. So of the IRCA, who offers eDocs? And which of these documents do you offer in eDocs? And then, um, which, okay, these are the non IRCA. And then who's using them? What percentage of brokers are using them? And it's pretty small, actually. So we've got some work to do, Orbit people, brokerage principals, frontline people, we've got some work to do. <laughs> and inquiry, which real-time inquiry transactions do you offer for commercial lines? Still pretty small numbers. And I, 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 I would get that for non-IRCA, but I don't get it for IRCA. <clears throat> and then, what percentage are using inquiries? Well, the biggest numbers are we don't offer or we don't track. And then, of what is offered, we still don't have a huge percentage using it. And again, that's waiting for perfection, not progress, right? And that's what we keep saying. It has to be about progress, not perfection. If the carrier's investing, we actually have to use it so that they want to invest more. <clears throat> and this one I found really interesting because Devona said she goes to her uh, policy wordings on farm and commercial all the time. And I know that, and I don't know all the BMSs, but I know that PolicyWorks has this really cool feature where you can actually just view a policy wording in real time. And we have very few um, carriers offering that. So then in new business, we said, um, how can a broker submit new business to you? Using either uh, Bravado through a real-time transmission or uh, Keel Connect um, or Gateway, Gateway's an option, or uh, EDI. So those are the numbers based by BMS. And then who's actually doing it? What percentage are doing it? So if we have an easy way to submit new business to the carrier and we're not using it, I don't understand why. We also published, Lori Smith, hand up. Oh, bigger, bigger hand, yeah. So Lori had a working group that did an awesome job on a best practice workflow for new business, quote and bind. Debbie Olson was on that, that working group. Um, it was a huge working group. Sits on the shelf. No vendors have come forward to pilot it. No carriers have come forward to pilot it. And sort of this maybe tells me why. You know, if people have invested already, we have such low take up. I don't know. Anyway, this is our one project that we're, we're going to work on. And then in commercial lines, the same question. How can a broker submit business to you? A few are doing new, uh, uh, real time transfer of data. Um, I know that there are some, where's Cheryl? I know some carriers can do ask back with policy works, but they obviously did not respond to the survey. Yeah. And then, uh, who's using it? So 75% don't offer, 12 and a quarter don't track, but around anywhere from 12 and a half to 22, uh, less than 10% are using it. So, so it's a two sided problem, hey? Yeah, yeah. So the other big thing that came out of our strategy group and listening to our industry strategy and our real t our um, AGM and listening to Bill talk is the customer uh, experience. <coughs> so we relaunched that working group. We tweaked the mandate. Um, Devon, I have four minutes, eh? Okay, yes. God, I can't say everything I want to say. Uh, I, I just wanted to read you the mandate, though we changed it. <coughs> And it is much more refined. The last working group, when it existed, failed because the, the mandate was way too big. Um, this is the mandate is to define the ideal customer experience, develop a journey for that customer experience, identify what tools we have, how we how do we utilize them, and then what is missing so we know what tools are required. So we went from there. We shared our best customer experience as a working group. And then uh, IBM hosted us in their client center for a day, which was an awesome experience. So we spent the time um, learning how to develop a persona, the characteristics of our customer. Uh, what are their pain points? Uh, uh, what are their needs? Um, what would be their message to us if they could deliver a message to us? How do we engage them? What are all the interaction points that we have with them? 
And that, and working off the Accord white paper on the customer experience, which is an awesome document, is forming our roadmap for that working group. So we're pretty positive about that. We will have more goodies to share with you um, on that. So planning for today, we, we took all the stuff that we heard at the industry strategy session. We took what we heard at our uh, annual general meeting uh, on November 11th, November, uh, Remembrance Day. And what Patrick had been saying in Insurance 2024, I was at the Insurance Canada Tech Conference, listened to some great stuff there. So we, we took all that stuff and found people who know all that stuff. Uh, so we have two keynote speakers um, and we have six panels that are going to drill down to all the information that we think you might want to know to help you move your business forward. But before we do, uh, Christine from IBM shared uh, the latest J.D. Power and Associates survey with me. And this is, was just released. I'm only showing the slide for Ontario. There is a slide for every province. Um, and it says that while Ontario insurers have been able to improve customer satisfaction as far as price goes, so people wanted price to come down and price came down, uh, they continue to miss the mark in interactions around claims and other service experiences, resulting in a decline in overall satisfaction for the third consecutive year. The thing that kind of bothers me even more than that is we don't hit a broker distribution channel company till number six with Intac. So none of our carriers that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis are in the top five of customer satisfaction. So we need to think about how we're going to change that, what are we going to do differently. Um, so that's what today is about. Grab all the ideas and the little morsels that, that uh, you can and figure out how we're going to remake this world. <laughs>